Right. So you guys probably know me, but uh, my name is Bridget Danner and I have a little bio here. This is what we're going to cover today. What to do before you detox, what to have in place. And then the main thing of this presentation is this core four detox categories. You know, really, especially for mold, but frankly, they could be applied for many things, many, you know, just just generally for detox or maintenance. Um, and then I'll, I'll talk actually just a little bit about, you know, customizing your detox beyond that. I kind of ran out of time, but I'll take your questions. Uh, some things that we offer, because we've gotten to the point where we offer quite a bit, and I think people may just not know, then we'll take your questions. Hi, Jamie from Massachusetts, Elizabeth from California. Hi there. Um, Barbara, Arizona, Jennifer, Massachusetts, to Massachusetts. Yeah, I was there this summer, and I know um, there was a lot of rain, <laughs> and there was uh, a, lot, a lot of people have basements, so uh, I was in my brother's basement for a bit, kind of checking things out. Oh, another Elizabeth from California. That's awesome. Um. Yeah, that coastal coastal California, also kind of humid. I'm sounding like such a downer, like saying everywhere is wet. But, you know, that's why I'm like, thank you. I just got my hair done today. So I never do my hair. So it's looking very tidy. Dawn from Alberta and Donna from Illinois. Awesome. I love having people here live. So, yeah, just feel free to uh, ask as, as we go. And, if uh, you know, people come in late. You can always watch it again. So I think you guys do, you know, mostly know me, um, but this is a little bit about me. I was working, my health career started as an acupuncturist, and I was living in Portland, Oregon, and, you know, basically I ended up getting very sick with uh, mold illness there and not getting diagnosed for a really long time. So, you know, while I was practicing with my clients, I was just learning a lot about health. You know, I knew I wasn't feeling well. So I was just learning about the paleo diet and blood sugar. And um, I got this functional diagnostic nutrition certification. But when I found the toxic mold, that was really like the smoking gun of of my case, and I think in any case where there's been significant mole exposure for a long time, in my opinion, it really will be the smoking gun because it just trickles down to so many other body sy systems um, that it just, if you don't remove that piece, you're just not going to get better and you're going to decline, which is where I was. I was really, you know, declining despite the fact that I was, you know, cooking my own food and, you know, doing all this stuff. So, you are probably in that boat, or maybe you're welcome to share in the chat uh, any of your experiences. So just quickly, you know, this is an educational presentation. I do encourage you to have um, a main supervising physician and, and also really more team, um, or you can work with us one-on-one -on -one as well. But we're not physicians, we're health coaches. So let's get started with pre-tox. So, you know, there's some things about detox order I'll talk about in a minute. But, you know, every practitioner has their own little phrasing. And some people say, we'll open up the detox pathways first. Yeah, sure. Uh, but what does that really mean or look like? Definitely means you're, you're pooping well. Um, really, you want to even be having a bowel movement more than once a day while you're actively detoxing because you want to, you know, be getting it out, 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 not just sitting there for 24 hours. So 24 hours is the minimum to have a, a, a second, another bowel movement, but uh, hopefully a little more. So that's why you may want to do some bowel support even, you know, even if you're having a bowel movement every day, just bump it up with a little more support that we'll talk about. So, you know, sleep, sleeping well is really important too. Uh, it's just dangerous, frankly, to be pushing toxins if for some reason you're only sleeping three hours a night, you're just not ready. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about 
getting ready and all that as we go to Oh, someone here in Australia is saying they just found out they have mold toxicity uh, and all the symptoms that are going with it. Yeah, you know, it's at least it's very, um, it's good you found out. It does take a little while. So I'm glad you're here. So I'll go over these kind of quickly, but you know, these are some things to think about before detoxing. Just having a a clean anti-inflammatory diet, lots of fresh food, avoiding inflammatory and processed foods. Most people are already doing that by the time, you know, we're getting into conversation. Again, with the sleep, uh, if you aren't sleeping well, really something important to focus on. Uh, what's going to turn that, that for you? Uh, if you're using a sauna to detox, that can really support your sleep. Lately, I've been meditating at night on a red light mat and using this little ozone fan thing, and it puts me right out. Um, but things like L-theanine, melatonin, Epsom salt bath, magnesium can help. If you're in perimenopause like me, making sure you're getting some supplemental progesterone can be helpful because you can get really wound up from having that estrogen dominance. And we've already talked about the bowel movements, but um, some things that can help are our product, My Toxin Binder. We also sell Bowel Mover by Cellcore that's very popular. Magnesium, Senna, fiber, fats, exercising. For some people, castor oil packs help as well. Making sure you're getting movement. Uh, this was really helpful for me in my mold journey. Like when I was at my sickest, you know, I barely wanted to move at all. But just even if you can take a walk or if you get to the point where you can slowly get back to the gym a little bit, it is really very healing. Our bodies are meant to be moving and we're moving lymph. Making sure you're resting and not just overworking yourself. Like you don't want to add in a detox if your life is already very stressful. So you need a little space for it. Uh, I'm going to say this little controversial topic, <laughs> be out of mold. You know, if if you're in a transition or, or something, yeah, you can do a little basic detox to kind of get through, um, but it's not really going to work if you're still in mold. And ideally, you know, have at least one person who's supportive of you, uh, if, if, it, if it's a practitioner or a coach or a family member or a friend, um, you know, I think, I know for me, I kind of shrunk myself when I had the mold. I didn't really tell people about it and it's hard to ask for help, but it's good to do. And then getting outside, you know, is, is very healing, the, the air, the sounds. So I really encourage people to get out. You know, some clients I'm, I had a client, we basically discussed her living in her screen and porch just to be out of the house more. And then foundational supplements. So I do see a lot of this getting skipped. So people are learning about different supplements online, but then they're not do taking things that are really essential. So you need vitamin D for your immune system and what is it, like 600 other functions, something like that. Um, you know, it works, it works as a hormone. Many people are low. Uh, I, I can get enough here in Arizona because I'm, I'm very outdoorsy, but uh, some, most people are not getting enough. So just, you know, simple things, getting vitamin D, getting essential fatty acids. They, it's good for inflammation. It's good for your brain. It's good for your gut. Uh, getting a high quality multi multivitamin. So you get things like B vitamins. Your liver uses a bunch of B vitamins, a bunch of protein. Uh, so support it. You know, often we have our clients take B vitamins twice a day. Magnesium, I think, is used for like 300 enzymatic processes in the body. It's not very pl plentiful in food anymore. So I encourage you to um, be taking it every day. It, there's isn't enough in a multivitamin because it's too bulky. Just looking at the notes real quick. Someone is sharing that they're struggling with constipation. 
uh, despite doing all the things. Have you done like the a bowel mover, like an herbal bowel mover? So ours has um, Chinese rhubarb, which is pretty strong, um, but some of them have like senna, artichoke can help move the bowels. So we'll talk, I think we'll talk about this more. Enzymes can move the bowels. Um, sometimes when the brain is inflamed, it's not signaling and then you're not getting the, the movement to the bowels. So that can be a factor that isn't considered enough. Sometimes we focus too much on the bowel and we need to be thinking higher up. So we'll, we'll get into that. Josh was saying, what about using a gym and sauna if you're sensitive to environmental toxins? Yeah, I mean, now you can get a home sauna very affordably. You know, you could, I find if people buy one like a tent on Amazon for a hundred bucks, I really don't care how fancy it is. You can get a sauna blanket for five or six hundred dollars. Um, you can get weights at home. So you can, if it's, if you're in a part, part of your journey where it's just too much to be out, um, then, you know, do it at home. Hopefully your home at home isn't moldy. Uh, in the, which case we put it all on a porch or, you know, at a relative's house that you go to or something like that. But yeah, I was using um, gym, sauna and a gym when I was sickest. And luckily for me, I didn't have that many irritations, but it became like really helpful because, um, you know, I was kind of displaced and it became a place where I could, you know, take care of myself. Yeah, the Swedish fritters are, are great. Okay. Um, let me keep moving here. So the, the four core mold detox are these four techniques, antioxidants, binders, and gut support. So I, I didn't make these up randomly. I just noticed as I made mold pr protocols for people that these were the categories. I, I do not want someone to try to detox without doing techniques. And my number one is sauna. Um, but there's a lot of techniques we're going to go over. Antioxidants are really important. Binders, if you can tolerate them, are important. And that can be as simple as just doing, um, you know, fiber. And if you can't even do that, or you're not quite ready to, like, don't worry about it. If for some reason today you can't take binders, it's okay. You just make sure you're having bowel movements, though. Um, and gut support, I just find, you know, everybody's gut is going to be affected. So we need to start building that up. So it's really that simple. I mean, there are other aspects. This is a difficult journey. But these are your core things. And our human brains try to make things more complicated. There's so many options out there. There's, you know, so many different opinions. I promise you, I probably shouldn't say this, but if you are just consistent with things like this, these simple things, and you're out of mold, you'll get better. You don't need like fancy, fancy, fancy. So we'll get into budgeting and, and a few other things, but uh, it's really, you know, I ask my clients like, don't just, don't keep changing around what you think you should be doing. Just build it up, you know, layer in your habits and stick with it. If you need to, if you don't agree with a certain supplement, sure, change it. Um, but, you know, just be, be patient Keep with it. And this stuff works and it's really affordable. So, a bit about order as I talked about the detox pathways. I feel like I'm being a little repetitive. <laughs> Bowel movements, sleeping, hydration, make sure lots of water, electrolytes, herbal tea, that kind of a thing. Because your kidney, right? Your kidney is one area where you're detoxifying. So some sox toxins will be turned water soluble, some will be turned fat soluble. So I feel like we talk more about the fat soluble ones that come into the colon through the bile, but there are also some going through the kidney and urine. And some, I forget which microtoxin it is. It might just be ochratoxin. It, there may be more than one, but it's specifically kidney toxic. So, um, you know, you just want to hydrate and flush. You know, some people may need support with 
like cranberry or something. I ended up getting a UTI during my mold journey, which I've never had. I never had one since, but I think that area was just, it was, you know, there's a lot going on. I was detoxing and so hydrate at the minimum. Sauna, we mentioned, I just think it's so important. Um, movement, diet, I, I kind of, we talked about getting enough protein and B vitamins for your liver. And then I know some people have food sensitivities, but it can grow over time. So colorful fruits, vegetables, and you're getting the fiber and the antioxidants. Analyze where you are. So we, we occasionally have someone write in who's very elderly, you know, going through a lot of things in and out of the hospital, and then they try something of ours and it doesn't go well. Uh, you've got to know where you're at, right? If you're super, super sensitive or you, you can't get on the floor or, you know, some people like, for example, can't do a coffee enema because they, they don't have the mobility. Um, so just, just be where you're at and it's totally fine where you're at. If, you know, you can't really tolerate the heat of a sauna, maybe you just lie on a red light mat or you, you spend only five minutes in the sauna. So just, you have to analyze yourself, right? And, and not push yourself too fast. And then Angela, analyze your budget too. So I've, I also hear people say kind of like, oh, these things are all so expensive and I can't do all these. You don't have to do all of them. You absolutely do not. Everybody has a budget. Everybody's losing a bunch of money <laughs> in, their, in their belongings, their house everybody's kind of in the same boat. So pick and choose what you want to do. Uh, we have a client who's a really lovely person. And, you know, I've seen her over the years do that. Like she didn't do a bunch of testing at once. But, you know, every now and then when she has a little more money, she'll kind of pop in and, and do something a little more. And I, I think that's great. Uh, when you start to detox, just add one thing at a time and then little by little, like I talked about. So don't be adding, don't be doing a coffee enema and the sauna and, you know, ozone therapy all in the same day right off the bat, right? Just add one thing. Get used to it. Let your body get used to it. Make sure you're strong enough to detox it out. So when we do these detox techniques, things are mobilized. And um, that means that they need to be processed out. So... That means phase one and two in the liver and phase three of elimination. So just, you know, little by little, make sure you're tolerating it. And if you're not, do you need to cut back? Do you need to pause? Just, you know, just analyze. So getting into techniques, most of them, like you just move lymph, lymph and blood. I say just, but it's, it's big. It's really helpful. Some techniques increase glutathione encourage sweating, actually encourage cellular repair, nervous system calming, sleep. When I have a client who can't take many supplements, I have them do more detox techniques. And they will tell me, oh, I've tried everything. Well, you really, is impossible. <laughs> you haven't tried everything. I have one client who was so sensitive. He couldn't even like sit in the sun. He couldn't hardly do anything. He would just do the teeniest, tiniest little things. And it does, it helps. You know, you just have to meet yourself where you're at. So here are some ideas. And we have more in, the blo in our blog. Um, but these are things that all could be helpful. Some of them are free. Some of them are not. Again, you don't have to do the expensive ones. Um, I will say that the cheap ones are really what saved me, not the expensive ones. So I've done, someone was asking about ozone. I've done the ozone. Where they take your blood out and they put the ozone in and put the blood back in. It was okay. I know some people have liked that more. I was mentioning I have that little ozone mister, which I don't fully understand ozone misting, so don't, I can't really speak to it. But, um, no, I'm just doing that now more for fun. When I was really sick, I was dry brushing every day. I was using the sauna a few times a week. Uh, I got into coffee and uh, I do Epsom salt baths, just easy stuff. I did a lot of essential oils. I just stuck with it. I rinsed my nose out twice a day. 
Um, just simple, simple stuff. So here's a few resources. Unfortunately, you can't like click these links, uh, but we do have a blog about 30 techniques and then it, it links off to instructions. Um, my Amazon book also goes into it more. And um, this last one is uh, some of the companies I recommend for like Castro packs and saunas and stuff like that. Um, someone was saying okra, they can't tolerate, you mean as like a binder or fiber? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, Josh, like a lot of people just don't, can't have a diverse diet. That will get better, but you're out of mold. Fantastic. You know, sometimes you feel better right away. I did, but sometimes you feel worse because you start dumping and that's probably you need to you know, support everything we're talking about today, take more binders, take more antioxidants, uh, you know, just if you start to feel worse because you're, you can't handle what you're detoxing, then um, add more support in. Cliffy, I think it is, is saying, what do you think about doing general preparation for detox using Excuse me, Vi Rad Chem, Organic Castor Oil, KL Support, Oxy Powder, Advanced Tugka, ESR. I don't know the ESR. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say some of those things are just straight already detoxifying. Um, you know, to me, Castor Oil is very gentle. Can you, KL Support, gentle. Oxy Powder, for the person who had the strong constipation, Oxy Powder can be very good for constipation. I know you're in Australia, so I don't know if Cliffy, you'd be willing to share what's in the oxy powder or a link to it so she can try to find it in Australia, but it's just very like bowel moving. Uh, yeah, I mean, all those things are great. I would consider those detox even more than detox prep. Like they're, you know, you got starting to get a little stronger stuff. Uh, yeah, Susan, I do the coffee enema in a bathtub. But some people who are like are bigger just lie on the floor on a towel in the bathroom. Uh, you have to retain the coffee, so you don't usually want to be sitting. Um, but coffee enema moves your bile and recycles glutathione. So there's there, those are two things that are really helpful um, when you're not feeling well when you're sick. There isn't as much study on them, I'll just be honest. But I can say from my experience and a lot of my clients do them, they just give you a lot of energy. Um, they just kind of like, I mean, I still do them now. Like, so I feel like I'm getting sick or something, you know, something's off. Coffee enema. <laughs> I just do it. Um, you get used to it. So people often say, well, isn't that just like drinking coffee? No, it's not just like drinking coffee, right? Because you're not processing it through your digestive system. It's being absorbed in the colon and we use a special kind of like little bit special kind of coffee. Uh, I do have a big blog and YouTube about that. Um, maybe I can find it later for you. But since we're on YouTube, if you look on my channel, like search just my channel for coffee enema, you can uh, find the instructions. You know, it usually takes like a few tries to get used to doing coffee enema. It's not going to be like right off the bat. You love it. Probably <laughs> it's going to take a few but I've been doing it now like seven years and I'm not the only one. Like people really sometimes like it. So, um, no, I wouldn't say it makes you feel addicted to caffeine. Um, Barbara is asking how long can we hold mycotoxin then in, in the body? You can hold it a long time. This was a bit of a surprise to me as I got into this industry if you're just recycling them back or you're colonized, you can have an old exposure for sure and it's still showing up. So no, no, a positive test now doesn't mean your house is positive, unfortunately. So this gets a little confusing. Okay, moving on to the next category is antioxidants. So... I feel like glutathione gets a lot of press for being helpful for, for mold. Um, and I think that's fine, but it doesn't work alone. 
it's recycled by certain things and repleted by things. So it's really important to get all the antioxidants and the bioflavonoids as well as much as you can with your, you know, dietary restrictions. So here are the five antioxidants that recycle each other, glutathione, vitamin C, ALA, CoQ10, vitamin E. And they all work a little different. Some are fat soluble, some are water soluble. Uh, CoQ10 is really good for the mitochondria. So it's, they're just very interesting how they all work together. And then the bioflavonoids, which you've probably heard about from things like green tea, they have like an antioxidant-like capacity or they support antioxidants in some way. I know that Jill Krista just did a post about antioxidants and I, I wanted to read more, but I hadn't gotten around to it yet. Um, but I was excited to see that because I really agree and I, I feel like they don't get talked about enough. So one thing that happens in phase one liver detox is you make a bunch of oxidative trash, basically. And at the cellular level, with toxins in the body and like an increased need for energy, there's just a lot of oxidative waste. So we just need to be full of antioxidants. And that goes for mold people, but really anybody in our culture nowadays, because we're just exposed to a lot of toxins, stress, EMF stress, that kind of a thing. So here's just a few things you can consider for getting more antioxidants in your diet, whether it's teas, you can grow fresh herbs in your garden and like cut up rosemary. It's like very strong to do that. Uh, there's a lot of things. This is just a small list. You can also think about going to a farmer's market or an Asian market to get more variety. Uh, and oh, this looks horrible, sorry. Um, but I'll show more of this later. But I do have a book, a little ebook that's free just about antioxidants. Um, and I wanted to recommend this book by Lester Packer called The Antioxidant Miracle. It's so interesting. Uh, it's on Amazon and it's about how those five antioxidants recycle each other and the bioflavonoids. So third category is binders, which you all know about. So some chemically bind, some physically bind like a little lattice. And it's, it's meant to pull things out of the digestive tract. You know, now some binders um, claim or have proven to go into the bloodstream and into uh, at the cellular level. Um, so definitely like cell core products uh, talk about that because of the size of their fulvic and humic acid being like the right size to be able to do that. Um, so I won't speak to that as much, but I will say that binders, uh, again, as tolerated, are helpful just to make sure that those toxins um, are being captured or their waste products are being captured. So I personally don't feel like a big boost from binders. You know, some people do. Some people will make them feel a little worse. Um, but mostly I find them to feel pretty neutral, except probably the constipation is the biggest problem. So then, you know, you need to add something that's a constipation aid. So our binder, the mitoxin binder, has three ingredients to help keep the bowels moving. You know, it's interesting. When this first came from the manufacturer, I thought it was so strong. I could barely take it. Uh, but last night I took one and I woke up like no effect. So um, I think it can feel very sensitive sometimes, like can be a little cramping. But if people are really constipated, sometimes they, you know, they, they do need like full dose. So uh, yeah, we don't want to be constipated when we're going through mold. So you have to experiment and see, you know, what's easier for you to tolerate. The, the charcoal can be a, a little constipating, I think is one of the bigger ones. Uh, I'm not a pediatric expert, but, um, you know, think mostly about smaller doses for smaller 
bodies. And a friend of mine who does do more pediatrics talked about putting a little binder in honey. Uh, this is something that I hear a lot is people are like, well, which binder goes with which mycotoxin? And how come my mycotoxins on my urine aren't the same as in my house? Um, don't worry about all that too much. Because when you get one urine test or one dust test, it's just one. It's just one little test. You know, you're not getting a test every single day. So molds actually make different toxins at different times. It's ever evolving. So we want to just go for all of them. So that's what we did with this guy. We, there's a good little variety of toxins in it, um, all geared towards mold. But there's other brands that gear towards mold too, like the GI Detox brand. Um, you know, Cellcore has a, which one is theirs for the, for the biological toxins? Biotox? Somebody can help me if you want. Um, but mostly I just encourage like a variety. So if you're getting over mold, you're going to probably be on binders a long time, you know, maybe a year, maybe two years. Got to just be honest here. So you might want to try different brands, you know, maybe take one thing in the morning, one thing at night. At the end of this list is Saccharomyces boulardii, which is actually a yeast that can bind. Um, I mentioned, you know, just fibers can bind and there's lots of different fibers. Um, so again, you may just want to experiment and see what your body likes. I don't know, Esther, if aloe vera is a binder, but it's a bowel mover. I don't know if it's a binder, though. Oh, yeah, Lydia, I forgot it. So Pectis Pectisol C, I didn't really put brands on this list, but Pectisol C is uh, modified citrus pectin. Um, I should have put modified on this list because <laughs> he would not be happy if I just put citrus. The modified, again, is smaller and it has a different effect. So yeah, Pectisol C, his Glypho Detox will also bind mold. Um, I like that formula quite a lot as well. Bentonite clay, yes, Rebecca, is a binder. Oh, her binder is aloe only? Mm. Maybe they use um, the whole aloe, like the fibrous outside. And then the inside is like gelatinous. So maybe it captures captures mold too. Honestly, like we did the research on this, by my, our formula, like a long time ago now. So I might just kind of have forgotten that aloe is uh, a binder. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, Josh, I didn't, uh, I probably, I didn't mean to skip it, but well call or cholesterolrene, which I th are those the same things? Those are um, prescription minders. So I personally never have used them, but some of my clients have liked them. Uh, Lydia, I, yeah, I'm, I, I think we could, someone, you can look up Jill Krista's binder, but we just have a little aloe powder in our um, binder. Any other questions on binders? They do need, do need to usually be taken away from meals. Uh, the fulvic and humic acid are maybe a little more tolerated or like fiber with a meal. Um, but away from medications too. So usually taking them morning and night are the best. But if you take thyroid hormone in the morning, like I do, um, you want to space it. So I would say give it, you know, if I take my thyroid hormone on waking, I would say I wait like at least an hour to do the binder or I just wouldn't do it in the morning. The least constipating, well, aloe would not be constipating because it's kind of moving. And then I really find the fulvic and humic acid to be not constipating, personally. Uh, I don't think the modified citrus pectin is very constipating. The Saccharomyces boulardii, I would not say constipating. Probably the clay and charcoal, those might be more constipating in the list, yeah. 
Susan, I don't know what sporanics is. Yeah, I guess I'm guessing it's some kind of mold binder. Okay, last category is gut support. I feel like this text is a little small. Um, but I'll just say that you see over here on the right, these are probably not even a full list of how mold can disrupt the gut. Mold is going to disrupt the gut. Like, unless you're in mold for one day, <laughs> it's going to disrupt your gut. Uh, so you can get tested to get a little more targeted support. But I'm offering here today some more general support that I think is very strong. Oh, some of the text here, kind of you can't see. Um, okay, so this is saying that um, my first recommendation is digestive enzymes. I feel like they don't get enough play as being incredibly helpful. So any kind of indigestion that's happening from uh, neurological issues due to mold or age-related issues or stress, um, you're just not bringing down food as well as you could be. So then it's hitting the colon, the large intestine, not broken down enough. So now you're using bacteria to break it down. Plus you have, probably have dysbiotic bacteria thanks to having mold. So now you have maybe gas, bloating, constipation, IBS, and those are just the symptoms. Just having a undigested food is irritating and it's a stress on your body, potentially going to your bloodstream and your liver. So getting those enzymes in there this gets you to actually digest the food. And to me, it's a quite a good bowel mover. So I love enzymes, but I'm ter terrible about remembering to take them. So, um, but if I have taken them like once or twice in the day, I'll usually wake up with a really nice bowel movement personally. And my favorite brand is Digest Gold by Enzymetica. I think it's totally worth it. I think it's the best one. I find it helps me a lot, but we're all a little different with the gut. You know, you could say I take enzymes. They don't move anything for me. Um, maybe try this brand. And if you're having a bigger meal with, you know, more food groups, I really love getting some enzyme support. Uh, another, the next category is uh, bile support. I wonder why this is so hard to see. So, Bile support, you know, the some those fat soluble toxins are leaving in the bile. So you want that bile always moving. And and sometimes the bile is clogged up because we don't eat bitter foods as Americans. We don't move enough. We don't drink enough water. We don't eat enough fats. So the bile does need certain nutrition. So that's one reason. Or the brain isn't signaling, or we're not chewing our food. So um if that bile is sluggish, you're not going to detox as well. So some things that are helpful for that are bitters or they're called or prokinetics. So unfortunately, you can't read this very well on the right, but it says artichoke, orange peel, fennel, arugula, gentian, ginger, dandelion. So those are some bitters. You could have them as salad or make a tincture. I put a little DIY recipe on the bottom. You can make your own bitters. And some products that contain it are MegaGuard, Mitoxin Binder, and Oberagest. Obir I haven't used that brand, but it's kind of popular. This will also often get you having a better bowel movement. So for the person who has having constipation, if you haven't tried some of these techniques, they can really help. Uh, when I had a bad concussion, and I was having some constipation, and I was using these prokinetics to help a little bit. Oh, okay. Someone's saying too much sacrifice. Too much saccharomyces boulardii can be constipating too. Um, Spiraronox is a drug. Susan, is that um, is that the one for yeast? There is some kind of yeast drug I took at one point, but it didn't really do anything for me. Dandelion tea, yeah, that's great. Yes, yeah, so you take enzymes with the meal like ideally just before the meal. Sometimes I forget I take them after the meal. It's still okay. Uh, super greens powder, Josh, not usually because they're not usually very bitter. 
So, you know, because they sweeten them a bit. But if it's unsweetened, it might be a little bitter. But I would say better to buy like a bitters tincture or something like that. That's, that'll be more bitter. And it helps you digest too. So if you're not attracted to using digestive enzymes, maybe you don't like taking pills, um, use a digestive tincture. I think apple cider vinegar is a little bit in this category too of just stimulating some movement. I, I don't have a picture, but you can buy like a small tincture of digestive bitters at your natural grocer. And the last category I mentioned is probiotics. So I think you're probably taking those, but I wanted to mention a few more things and just a little bit about the category. So we personally only sell Megaspore. It's a spore-based, like long-acting, repopulating probiotic. So it has these strains that go in and starve unfriendly bacteria, feed friendly bacteria. But there's also some strains that maybe aren't spores that have a specific function like for anxiety or appetite or skin. And those, you know, those can be used to stuff like that. So I think there's, you know, there's different possibilities. But we like the spores because we're mostly trying to get people to repopulate. So usually we have people start with Megaspore and be on that for a month and then add Megapre, which is a prebiotic fiber that is not supposed to feed SIBO. You do have to add it slowly, though, because adding a bunch of fiber can be a lot for your body all at once. So then we add that slowly. And then usually you would add Mega Mucosa, which has some amino acids to rebuild the mucosal lining of the gut. And it has some immunoglobulins for your immune system. So most people are in this leaky gut constipated category. So the mega mucosa is the better choice for them. Some people like me, when I was going through mold, I had loose stool. And the mega IgG literally cleaned this up after years of having loose stool. Years. I couldn't believe it. So yes, you could do both supplements. That's totally fine. They just work a little differently. The mega IgG is more for the immune system and infections. And something about it, it just can tend to slow. I don't know. How can I say? Yeah, it just sort of slows things down in, in a sense. So I like to take them in the morning and then get a lot of water in the day. Because you can go from loose stool to constipation on those things. Uh, but then it's like I'm off them now. I'm just normal. I don't, I don't go, you know, I'm not loose stool anymore or constipated. So, um, yeah, and you always want to start these slowly because if you're very dysbiotic or you haven't been able to eat many foods, it can feel strong. Um, these are strong, like, practitioner-grade products. So you can start with just a half a megaspore every other day. You do take it with a meal because it, it's supposed to be taken with protein. The Mega Pre, you could sip all day, the, the liquid. And then the Mega I, I, IgG I mentioned, I like in the morning. Mega Mucosa kind of whenever. Could be good in the morning if you want to get bowel movements going. I just wanted to share this really lovely quote we got from this kit we sell. And she was saying she had chronic constipation. And after using this kit for one month, it turned around. She has well-formed stools, no bloating after meals. It's amazing. You know, I have clients like coming in like 20 years of these symptoms. So I, I'm a big fan of Microbiome Labs products. You know, they're a little spendy, but you don't have to take them forever. If you're out of mold, you know, you've got some of your detox routines down and you want to start rebuilding your gut, uh, you know, maybe you'll be on them like three months, something like that. Um. I'll take some questions in a, in a second here, but I wanted to give you a sense of bringing these elements together. So if you're getting ready to detox, so I, Josh gave an example. He just moved out of mold, but he's feeling worse. So he, I would say he needs more binders, more antioxidants. For a minute, he needs to just like chill and, you know, get a little calibrated 
and uh you know when you're he's feeling a little stronger maybe he can you know do a lymphatic massage or do something a little bit more but i think for him right now we do, we never want to make more side effects that means more toxins are spinning around in your body you don't want that so he needs he needs to kind of pull back a bit and find his equilibrium right now i don't know josh if you're in pain but things like fish oil magnesium turmeric could be helpful epsom salt baths so it's all a little customizable, right? Uh, and then again, do you have the energy to do this? If you're feeling like 8 out of 10 stress, don't start detoxing right now. Wait a little bit longer. Wait till you're like 4 <laughs> out of 10 stress. What's your budget? You know, what can you afford? What do you already own? I sometimes want to buy something and realize, oh, I already have something like that. Uh, is there anything you do want to buy? These are our four categories again. This is what, all you have to do. Do at least one thing from each category every day. That's the minimum. If you can do more, you can do more. So here's an example of a very affordable way to start. Number one, we have a technique. It's dry brushing and then some walks for movement. So we're moving lymph and blood. That's it. Number two for antioxidants, we have vitamin C. Very affordable. Doing 1,000 milligrams three times a day. That's it. Activated charcoal. Very affordable. Do it in the morning and the night. Then this half person can add a digestive enzyme. A little bit more expensive, but not that bad. And maybe getting just more fiber and color when they're grocery shopping. That's it. That seems like, how could that do anything? But I'm promising you that will do something if you stay with it. It's not going to do something in one day. But if you stay with it and you're managing stress and you're getting sleep and you're, you know, getting emotional support, being in nature, you'll get better as long as you're out of mold. So there's a low budget option. Here's a little more option. Say you buy a sauna. You're using that at home five times a week. At the same time, you do a castor oil pack, so no extra time. Those aren't really that expensive to start with either. You know, maybe $40. Say for antioxidants, you're going to go a little bigger. You're going to do NAC, which supports glutathione. You're going to do an antioxidant blend and CoQ10. And yeah, now you're spending a little bit more money, but if you have it, great. You're going to try two different kinds of binders that are a little more specialized and you're going to start a more intensive gut support. So this is getting a little more expensive in supplements every month and, you know, possibly buying a sauna. But again, it doesn't have to be that expensive if you buy a cheaper sauna or, or what have you. So um, does anybody have questions about that? Just doing those four things. Let's go back. This is it. You can write a little note to yourself right now and you can ask me any questions you would like, but um, you want at least one antioxidant and we could go back over what those are. You want to do at least one technique. This is one that you can, you can do a lot though. You could do five a day. You could be dry brushing, jumping on a rebounder, um, using the sauna, coffee enema. I can tolerate all that. I cannot tolerate like IV pushes and stuff like that. That did not go well for me, but that's fine. I'd rather do all these cheap things at home. Uh, binders, again, you just two or three times a day is enough. You don't need to go crazy. If you can only take one time, it's better than nothing. And then gut support, again, could be, you know, very simple. Or if you're in a stage where you really want to get after it, you can do more things. So that that's really it. You probably already own something on every category. <laughs> Uh, and then let me just show this and then I'll take the question. Um, once you have these four things for your particular case, you may need a little bit more. So I personally definitely had lung stuff and nasal stuff. I mentioned I was rinsing my nose twice a day. It's, it's very affordable and it helped, it helped me, you know, with some of the throat pain and lymph swelling that I had. You know, later I found mouth taping that helped me a lot. If you're not sleeping, I really recommend you getting some support around that. 
if you need some energy, there's a few ideas here. Uh, if you're struggling with your hormones, you can get testing, blood testing of your thyroid. You could do our Dutch test. You could get herbal support. You can do bioidenticals. I think this is something could be added sooner in the process if you have the money and the energy to pursue it because it can give you energy to do your detox. So those are just different ways to customize. And I only put a handful here. Um, but that's the idea, like, right, we don't all need to do a steam inhaler. But if that speaks to you because you're, you do have trouble breathing or with pollution or whatever, then that may be a fit for you. So Barbara, great. I'm so happy. Like, I felt like when I found this, I was like, okay, this is so clear. Uh, really just do those categories and stick with it. I mostly, I don't have people come back usually for three months because I'm like, don't bother me. Just do it. <laughs> I mean, obviously they can contact me if they're like, something isn't working or whatever. But our human little brains, we want to like, this isn't working. Let me change everything. It's just consistency. It's just sticking with it. You're going to have good days and bad days, but they're going to get better if you keep, keep with it. Yeah, the mullein tea is great. Uh, BC ATP season is a product from Cellcore that is a fulvic and humic acid. So it's a bit of a binder, but it the fulvic and humic acid are also, let's see if I can explain this right. The pH is very favorable for making energy for your body for the ATP production process. So we don't sell that in our shop yet. We sell it through their shop. Um, I, I really like it. So we may start to sell that in our shop. Oh, Lydia is sleeping with her castor oil pack. Yeah, that is one way to do it. Um, Barbara, yeah, here's the categories again. And also in the YouTube notes, there's a link where you can get the ebook. And the ebook has the categories and like everything. The ebook has everything. So then you have it all written out. And you can just write on the ebook. Uh, yes, fish oil needs to be clean. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, I always say don't buy your fish oil like at Costco or Target. You really want to buy a, a good brand of fish oil. And some people don't take fish and you can buy an algae brand instead. Uh, no, I don't know that Medi Plus. Patricia, what does it do exactly? Vitamin C, just um, by mouth, Lydia, three times a day. Yeah, the fish oil, it's like not very sexy, but man, it's still really good. You, know, you may want to take three grams a day, even maybe up to five grams a day if you're really, really inflamed. It's not forever. Epsom salt and an enema. Ooh. I don't know. There's other types of enema. I think if you did a salt enema, it would be a little intense, perhaps, um, and maybe a little irritating. But there are other types of enemas with like herbal tea. I've just, the coffee has a certain property, right, for detox. So other enemas may be helpful. Um, but people are like, can I use decaf coffee or this or that? And, you know, it's just not the same. Janet said, which for biofilm? You mean which gut products? One thing that breaks down biofilm is the product uh, Biocidin, which is like an herbal tincture blend. Barbara said, what about them if the Mega Pre makes you feel sick? Did, have you tried the pill? There's a, it also comes in a pill. I'm wondering, Barbara, do you have just like some, um, do you think you have poor mot motility, like things kind of sit for you in general? Um, I would, if I were doing HCL and digestive enzymes, I would do them both before the meal. Yeah, before is better. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Quicksilver, Quicksilver also has a very fancy detox or uh, bitters brand. 
Yeah, Lydia said vitamin C flush is great for constipation. Yeah, if you take a lot of vitamin C or a lot of magnesium, it'll flush you. So it's so to salt water. <laughs> but that's really, you know, we don't want to use that every day. Yes, we did talk about, yes, your body can test positive for toxins, even if it's not showing on your house. Either it's an old house or a workplace or something like that, or your testing is off in your house for some reason. But yeah, I've seen now some cases where, like, for example, I talked to a woman who is a physician and... Um, she remembers being exposed to moldy places like while she was in school, you know, and now she's, you know, out of school 20 years and she tested her house and like she can't think of any other place it would be. Um, so it's, it's kind of crazy. Okay, Barbara, you might want to try the capsules, or you could try like a different fiber supplement. I'm partial to the Mega Pre, but you, you could try a different one, like a different brand. Um, I've heard a chiropractor say you can nebul nebulize biocidin. Yeah, I think you could. I don't have a nebulizer. Um, but I've put silver in my steam inhaler for my lungs. I'm just not, since I don't own a nebulizer, I feel like they only became like able to get like during COVID. Um, I just can't, I can't um, advise about it as much because I don't have that experience. Stace says her gut is clear, clear of mycotoxins and so is your mark. Yeah, sometimes we're not colonized. Um, we're just recycling it. It's just still in us. So you, you could be a good candidate for, you know, lots of binders and sauna. <coughs> I think it would be frustrating to not know where it, it's, it's ever come from. So hopefully you can find out. Okay, I just have a few more slides. Oops, I wanted to share some resources and a coupon code. So we talked about this. These are like other, you know, things to consider. Some of you said you have my book. I really appreciate it. This is what it looks like. Oops. And it's so comprehensive. You know, it's like 350 pages of just mold, mold, mold. So we talk about testing, you know, other little remedies, stuff like that. Um, so the book is on Amazon. It's also on our shop. We have lots of free eBooks on our website. If you want to look around the YouTube, there's a lot there, Instagram. So we have a, lots of little free things for getting started. Um, we're going to give you a couple a coupon code for supplements. We do offer lab testing. You just order it yourself. You cannot order it out of the U S or there's three States where you cannot order due to state laws, but Everybody else can order labs and you can, you know, take those, do whatever you want with those, or you can bring them to us for coaching. And if you run a few labs, we'll look at a few labs. You can also bring labs from other places and we'll look at those. And then the last thing we have going on is we have a really in-depth program, practitioner program coming up here soon. I'm so annoyed that this text is so light. Um, but if you want to do lab testing and consultations with us, um, it's all at our shop, which is Functional Detox Products. And you can see the supplements, and there's a tab for uh, lab testing there and the consultations. So I'll just put that in the chat. Uh, and then I mentioned like the sauna company that I use, which is Sunlight, and I have a link for that. And then I have a link for like the castor oil kit, a sauna blanket, mold home testing. We have links on all that stuff. So that's at our kind of information site. If you go under Bridget's favorites. And the link for the ebook is in the YouTube um, notes. If you can see it, can you let me know if you see it? It's Australia. 
it's like under the YouTube. And this is the coupon code for our shop. It's for $15 off our product line and it's mold 15. Um, and I'll just give you a, a little hint. There's also a different coupon code in the ebook. So um, let me get you the link to that one as well. Oh, here it is. This is the protocol book that we basically covered today. And all right, there's like so many things. I feel like it's a lot, but I just wanted to share everything. So the practitioner course. Okay, so here's like the antioxidant ebook. You can find that at bridgetdanner.com. Um, and this is the practitioner thing. Um, you don't have to be a practitioner to join. You can just be really interested or an advocate for someone in your family or yourself. It's just our first in-depth offering. But it's supposed to, the idea is it's a practitioner level. Um, but you don't have to be a practitioner. Let me get you the link for that too, because I think I have to close this out to see it a little bit better. Oh, wait. So we're just starting the thing with a, a webinar to just tell you, you know, just teach you kind of how we'll be teaching it and, and that kind of thing. Uh, really excited about that. That's in about two weeks. And um, yeah, again, you don't have to be thinking of becoming a practitioner. If you're just really interested in all this stuff, you can come and learn. It's just a free webinar. So great, Sue Ann. Appreciate it. Um, any other questions? Let me just put these slides away. Really ap appreciate you guys being here. I always love it when there's a good size group. Um, and just like do the work, spread the word, be consistent, right? Don't be fancy, be consistent. I used to joke, uh, I play some pickleball and whenever somebody was trying to do like fancy shot, they'd often, you know, screw themselves and hit it out of bounds. And I always would say, trying to be fancy. And that's kind of what we do, right? Sometimes, you know, we have to push the edge, but um, I don't mind if you do several things, but don't keep changing all the time. You know, you really have to stick with something to see it. And you could journal about it, you know, and start to see what makes you feel better and worse. Like Josh mentioned, if he's around like fragrances and stuff, it's going to make him feel worse. So, you know, you want to take yourself out of those situations if you're not ready for them. If taking too many binders makes you feel worse, you know, you just back off. Um, so you just kind of have to be, you know, as centered as you can. And um, the stuff definitely does work. So appreciate you being here. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Okay, the recording will be on here as well if, if you want to refer anyone back to it. Oh, thanks, Barbara. So thank you so much. I hope you come to our practitioner webinar. And yes, I am trying to be the voice of balance and reason. I think luckily the mold community is changing and um, we are seeing a tendency to like be a little less dogmatic about it and a little bit more nurturing and, you know, managing our nervous systems and, and all that stuff is really important as well. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, uh, Rebecca. Okay, see you guys on the next one. Appreciate it.